Uh, thank you for the introduction. So uh, for the last talk of this session, I'm going to talk about the most star viewer, which would be a high performance molecular data delivery and visualization toolkit uh, for the web. It's not like experimental technology as uh, VR or something like this, but this is something that's being currently used and that you can use yourself. Uh, so what it is, uh, the most star project, some of you might be familiar with the light mall and NGL viewers. So we've kind of uh, got together with Alex Rose and decided that instead of stealing features from each other, it would be much better if we collaborated. So we started this uh, open collaboration between RCSB, PDB, and SATEC, where I'm from, uh, which is uh, developed openly on GitHub. It is MIT license and written in TypeScript. So uh, what are our goals? Um, we produce all these biostructure data, which are the atomistic and coarse model. We have the experimental and computation data, whole cells, organelle models, and then annotation and biological context. And uh, as we have seen during this conference, we put a lot of energy into refining these models. But once we have them, it's a good idea to have a nice presentation, a nice, uh, nice ways to present them, and ideally make it very accessible, interactive, uh, efficient, and integrated with existing tool, and ideally this would, this would lead to insights. So uh, the most star is mostly about interactive visualization part. So by interactive, I mean that if you go to a web browser and you enter uh, PDB ID, for example, this Zika virus capsid, you get the structures pretty much immediately. So this is pretty much where the state of the art was um, two years ago. No, I'm, and this is where it is now. We can do in a web browser, not on this laptop, but we have something like a mid-range uh, graphical CPU. We can do a mesoscale model, for example, here is a cell pack model of HIV capsid in blood serum, which will be almost 70 million of atoms. And it is an interactive model which you can browse in your web browser. So if you have the data, there is now the technology to just present it to, the peop to people now. Uh, and um, there are two more examples of, of these mesoscale models. For example, the cell pack model of the Ermature VHGV capsid or mycoplasm. Again, to, to show you that it can really be interactive, even on this four-year laptop, I can, for example, load this uh, part of influenza model from, from cell pack. And as you can see, it loads almost immediately. I can change it on occlusion and give it an outline. And I have a very fast, very interactive model in a web browser that the users can interact with and play around. Uh, so one of the goals of my talk here is to actually show you what, what, is, what is possible currently to do in, in the Mostar Viewer. So there is, um, the, or this will be more interesting uh, to the crystallography and uh, EM community. So we can do crystallographic symmetries. We can show uh, supercells of structures and interesting another interesting feature that we have is the ability to show 3d as in 3d as nfg symbols for carbohydrates so if, a, if if you are working carbohydrates and your structure has a carbohydrates we can we can visualize them oh Yes, this way. So here is a structure with, with carbohydrates. Everything is fully, fully interactive. And uh, hopefully, to people that understand these things, it makes it, makes it much uh, easier for them to see and understand what's going on. Now, another thing would be interactive or interactive, uh, an, uh, interesting annotations of the data. For example, the, the purple spot here would show um, Explo uh, exploded view of interaction between two chains in a molecular complex, or we can even show very nice images of the whole ribosomes as surfaces. Now, again, a few more examples. Uh, we can show, I don't know, molecule, nice molecular binding site with surfaces with illustrative rendering or this is one of the new features that we have is the interactive computation of non-covalent interactions 
between residues in a protein, which could also be shown. And uh, we also have support uh, for, for, uh, for coarse grain structures, as shown, for example, the nucleopore complex here, which was uh, published two years ago in Nature. I will get back to this structure in a while. So the way this is, a, yeah, yeah, and one more thing is uh, time series. So for example, for, we can show animations from MD simulations or from Excel experience. One, for example, one of the challenges for the Excel experiment, experiments is that individual snapshots are deposited into PDB as separate, separate IDs. So we need a very straightforward way to load them into the browser and show them as a single trajectory and preferably make it very fast. So if I go back here to the most star viewer and uh, click on this example, now even this public Wi-Fi, I have just downloaded 14 structures using the format and I can iterate between them and see, see how, the, how the simulation or the dynamics evolves directly from the simulation. Um, yes, there are just different types of visualization, we try to make it very pretty for, for the user. And I think would be annotations. For example, we have seen a lot of validation data presented. So, so here it will be residue outlier, outlier validation for, for rhodopsin, which will be projected directly on the surface, which is much interesting way of presenting the information to the user than just showing a PDF document. And again, this would be interactive. Or we can show uncertainty along the chain with varying, varying width and coloring it. And yes. So, so the way this is achieved is we have written a custom rendering engine in WebGL, which allows things like instancing, imposter to reduce the amount of geometry. And uh, it can even run on a server site to generate images. It's a project called Mole Render. And, um, Here it showcases how, how important is lighting of your model. So not, not normally, most of the other browser, most of the other tools would just allow you to show direct and ambient lightning. And uh, with more modern rendering methods as, and, such as ambient occlusion and better lighting, we can see that the features of the structure are, are, and the uh, interacting parts come out much nicer. So, this was, this was the, some of the visual, visualization capabilities that we have now available in, in, in Molstar. And now let's see, let's get an insight of a little bit how it works. So in order to represent the very large structures, uh, we, have to come up, we have to come up with a new data model for, for representing them. And uh, because I'm not a biologist or chemist, I actually didn't know much about some PDB hierarchies, et cetera. So, I've created a kind of new abstraction for the structures that is comprised by the model, which is something that you would find in a, in a PDB file, which is then superseded by units, which are subsets of atoms, which form structure, which on the outside behaves like PDB hierarchy. So if you have, for example, in this example, this uh, big viral capsid with about 40 million atoms, if we were to represent this structure in memory, it would be 500 megabytes just for the positions, which would pretty much almost kill your browser tab. But using this approach, we only need about 50, 50 megabytes. So again, to see how, fast, how far this works, if I go back to the viewer, and um, I do, it was, yeah, 5J, 7V, <laughs> we almost immediately download the structure and have a, a Gaussian surface representation of it. We can change the representation to cartoon and uh, different coloring. And again, the change happens uh, almost immediately on a structure with 40, 40 million atoms. So if, if you have the data, you can, you can really do these things interactively for the users and make it very, very interesting. Now, another thing is data format. So most of, most of the tools that, are, that were working before, uh, in the, in the, at least in the web space, were still bound to the, to the standard C format. So, I mean the old PDB format. But we have decide to, decided to fully embrace uh, CIF, the text CIF. So 
Molestar provides uh, first-class support to SIF, so if you are a programmer and you are writing code in, within, within the Molestar framework, you get code completion for SIF categories and SIF fields, which reduces the number of errors that you make when you are working with the structures and so on. But the thing is that SIF, it is still a text format and it is very, very, very slow to transfer it over internet. So what, what our colleagues in RCSB did a couple of years ago, they created the MNTF format, which made it very fast to transfer the structure over the net. The problem is it was completely new format. And as we all know, SIF keeps evolving and new things are added, it's being changed. So there has to be somebody who is maintaining the format. And long term, this is, this is not feasible. But I have realized that uh, you ca we can take the MMTF encoding and apply it directly to SIF. So what you get is if you apply, if, if you do this, the shape of the data, the, the contents of the file stay exactly the same, but the files get much, much, much slower. So for the entire archive, you get about 60, 60 to 80% reduction but there are many, many, many small files. So when I was thinking about the nice, nice way to, to demonstrate the, the difference, I kind of remember the nuclear power complex, which kind of looked like this flying spaghetti monster. Um, this structure, it is, it is available on, on this PDB dev site, which is for the deposition of, of, the, of the structures uh, which are obtained using the hybrid methods. So this is, a, this is a SIF file with a different dictionary from MMC, which would be in PDB. And if I go to the Mostar viewer and I, I download it in SIF, you can see we have to wait and downloads about 30 megabytes and it starts parsing. And only now it starts creating the representation. It was still reasonably fast, it takes about six or seven seconds to display it. Okay, so now we have the uh, interactive version of the nuclear power complex. But you have noticed that it took about 10 seconds just to download it, about 30 megabytes of data. Now, using automatic conversion without any user interaction or any, anything, just automatic conversion, we can convert this to the binary SIF. And now we can see only three megabytes of data were downloaded. So we have effectively eliminated the download step and the parsing step and what's going on in the, in the background now is the, is the model is being uh, reconstructed. And this was completely automatic. Uh, the same data is there and it is the 10, 10 times smaller file than normally. So if you have a larger structures in, in SIF, you can just use this pretty much out of the box for visualization. There is, even an, there is a now an uh, implementation of binary SIF in, in Java and I think somebody did it in PyMol as well. And it is being used now in production in both RCSB and PDB. So, and it has been for more than two years now. So it's been stable and uh, it is there for you to use. Uh, another problem or issue with web viewers is uh, selection. Pretty much every viewer would have a different selection language like PyMol, VND or JMol. And because we are a little about abstraction, we kind of came up with this MolQL language, which is a meta, meta language, which can, you, which can take a, ex, a selection expression from different, different uh, uh, tools. So if you are familiar with PyMol, you know their selection language. You'll be able to use it in, in Mostar in, in very near future. It would have com compiled into this bigger Lisp expression, but it can then be executed anywhere. I think uh, Spencer Berivan is integrating support for this language in BioJava. So the idea is, is to kind of have a common query language which could be used uh, as interchangeable thing between different uh, software. Now to, now, to get, now to get to the data, to the, server, uh, to, to the client, we have two servers. One is volume server, which is, which is a service uh, for, for serving volumetric data and regular grids. So it's like e, uh, crystallographic and uh, EM densities. Uh, it's a, it serves the data in optionally downsampled 3D slices and it supports currently the CCP4, MAP, BRICS and DNS formats, but it can be, in, um, it can be extended to multiple formats and it supports multiple channels and stuff like this. And it's usable by uh, third parties 
basically if you if you have a lot of em data in your lab and you want to provide it to the users to, on their laptops touch immediately all you need to do is provide the folder with the maps and run a simple conversion utility and then you, you can uh, use it uh, the use case that i like to use is the cryo em structure of zika virus which would be 1.6 gigabyte of ccp4 data even compressed and if you want to show the picture it is enough to send just one megabyte and have it shown immediately again i like showing it so when i click here on the zika plus em thing it downloads the Zika virus, it, downloads, it downloaded the data, then it did some surface reconstruction, and immediately the, the yellow thing around is, is the EM density um, represented as a surface, and uh, the black thing is a fitted model. And to showcase the, the structure representation, how it works, we can even start animating the structure, and in using spherical interpolation, we can see how the asymmetric units fill the model. And these animations could be customized and uh, if you are program a little bit, you can play around with it and do really interesting and fancy stuff using this technology. Uh, oops. So yeah, uh, there's the same thing we have for model data. So for example, if there is a big structure and uh, you only provide validation result for let's say ligands and you want to, or, or some service for uh, binding sites you can use the model server to query just small parts of larger structures and instead of sending largest amount of data, you reduce it um, just to what needs to be sent and um, the data could be then viewed uh, pretty much immediately. Okay, so UI and session sharing. Um, so uh, in the demos that I've been showing, you have noticed that I have almost never uh, type the name of the structure. I pretty much always uh, clicked uh, on something here. And this uses a, a custom built state saving mechanism, which is, um, which is there for uh, saving the reloading sessions, uh, animations and storytelling, uh, and do and do time travel. And is a uh, fast to create, uh, easy to reason, out, uh, reason about and stuff like this. Basically the way it works is the state is separated into atomic transformations like downloading, parsing or creating representations and then arranged into a tree which can be saved as a JSON object which describes the entire state and then can be shared between users. And finally, uh, we need a user interface and the problem here that uh, no solution fits all, all use cases. So our goal is to kind of provide a module architecture and building blocks for, uh, that, that, that can create your, where you can create your custom, custom UI for your specific needs if you decide to integrate uh, Molstar. And uh, the default UI that, I, that is on Molstar org would be uh, pretty much to show the internal API and for this I have one last demo to show you how it works is um, so I can load a structure on the sequence view I can select part of the sequence and uh, I can then show it as let's say balls and sticks and color it with the red color so it has been an interactive edit edit of the structure similar to what you can do in PyMO. But now the important step is, this isn't just a screenshot that you can take. You can, you can then save the state, uh, let's call it, let's call it one. And we have saved it. Uh, then I can load, it, it isn't limited to just one structure. I can load a different structure, show them both, um, select the other one, let's say measure distance between them, um, make the phone bigger so that we can see it, and I can save this as two. And now, just by clicking here, I can interpolate between the, the two different states that have changed. But, but wait, that's not all. I can now upload this um, to, to server, 
and it, it, get, it gets added here. And if I right click it, it opens a new tab. And as you can see here in the URL, there is a URL where the snapshot is. So anybody can get this link and see the same view as you. And it can be shared. And then, then again this, this could be edited. So I can, I can select this structure, color it blue, and uh, save it as three, and upload it as CCP for two. And now, if I, if I refresh it, I can load it again. I can load this, this thing with, with the blue, blue one. But I can still go back to the original one, which I uploaded before. And as you can see, it didn't reload any of the structure. It just used the same representation. So it is the automatic thing. So this could be used, used, for example, to build very interesting education services. And in, in the very near future, we will make the, the user interface for this much better. And it will, hopefully it will serve as something like PowerPoint uh, for molecular uh, animations and uh, introductory videos and stuff like this for education and for much, much more interactive, much more interesting presentation of the user data starting in the protein data bank and hopefully soon other databases. Uh, so yes, um, Mostar.org is on GitHub. You can use this viewer currently at the protein, in both protein data banks. Uh, mm -hmm. If you want, you can use the binary SIF format and uh, acknowledgements to my colleagues. Thank you. Thanks very much. That was a great talk. Um, time for one or two quick questions. Got the mic oh, I can't resist, can I? Uh, thank you for that presentation. It's very nice to see free software being used to make beautiful pictures of molecules. I have uh, a, an assertion and a comment. My assertion is this. It's entirely perverse to create a representation, a novel present, representation of carbohydrate that's inferior to glycobox. Uh, my suggestion is to delete what you've got and you make a representation that's like glycobox. Okay. And uh, would, you, would you agree that we have both of them? Why would one want it? Why? You're introducing a novel representation that's a burden on the user. They already understand how carbohydrate looks. And, okay, and I, I, I fully understand your point. I'm, as I said, I'm a computer scientist. We, we, got, we were approached by the people who did the 3D as NFG and we collaborated with them. So you said glycobox? You sh yeah, they, they, they should have done their research. <laughs> okay, thank you. Well, thank I, you. I, thank I, you. I am 100% I'm, I'm sure they would disagree with you, but having <laughs> said that... Well, they wouldn't be the first. <laughs> yes. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Time for one other quick question. Oh. Bring this on. I'm just interested in this online viewer that you showed. Is it possible to uh, download somehow the state? Like, or like if you save the link, let's say, and want to open it two years later, is it still active? Yes, you, you, can, you can get the JSON file, but we will be planning cur currently, currently it's just like last 30 states that you save, but we'll be, we'll be having more permanent state saving that will stay there indefinitely. But yeah, definitely it is, it is possible to download just the JSON object and then re-upload it and use it. Okay, sure. Thank Actually, you. yeah, there is a just, so here, here is a, a download JSON button so you can keep it on your own machine and then send it somebody to, to somebody with email or something like this. This is to, mostly to showcase the capabilities currently in this UI. That's great. So thanks Thank again. You. And I, th I think John wants to introduce our final speaker and wrap up uh, at the end. But yes, that, uh, let's.